Research has shown the effects on the sleep-wake cycle of being isolated from external time cues, including natural light and dark cycles. Research has also revealed the peaks and troughs over the 24-hour cycle of body temperature, including the lack of alertness and increase in errors during the circadian trough. Research has also suggested there may be a circadian cognitive performance rhythm controlled by our core body temperature rhythm. Research has investigated the role of endogenous pacemakers and exogenous site givers in the control of our circadian rhythms such as the sleep-wake cycle and the core body temperature cycle. The following points may be useful to consider when analysing the sleep-wake cycle and research into this rhythm. Although case studies lack generalizability, the effects of isolation from external time cues has been shown in many studies with broader samples. Therefore, the finding that our circadian sleep-wake cycle is free-running, but requires light to entrain it with the outside world, is reliable. Our knowledge of the sleep-wake cycle, however, may be limited, because the studies used artificial light, so the participants didn't bump into each other and could function. The lights were only switched on when they were already awake, but this might still have influenced their rhythms. Researchers supported the idea that artificial light can reset rhythms, and so the studies may be measuring partial rather than complete isolation, and as such may lack internal validity. It could also be argued that research into the sleep-wake cycle ignores individual differences in our circadian cycle. For example, some people are more awake in the morning and some in the evening. Although both types of people have a 24-hour cycle for sleep and wake, the peaks and troughs in the cycle of chemicals behind the rhythm may differ. A person's chronotype, for example, might be linked to their sensitivity to external cues, which may in turn affect the release of chemicals such as melatonin. The following points are useful to consider when analysing the core body temperature cycle and the research into this rhythm. Researchers have suggested our core body temperature might be linked to a range of circadian performance rhythms. For example, it's been suggested that physical tasks might be performed better at certain times of the day. This has stimulated research into cognitive performance rhythms, such as cyclic changes in memory functioning over the 24-hour period. It's been argued that it's better to perform a memory task when our core body temperature is highest, or long-term memory at least. And this has applications for optimising performance and learning in education. There's support for the link between cognitive function and body temperature from research. However, the findings have been inconsistent. There are other important applications of research in this area. Knowledge of the errors associated with the circadian trough, for example, have led to greater awareness in education, warning of the dangers of driving at this time, and interventions have taken place to reduce the impact of this dip in alertness for shift workers, where the cost of errors might be very high. There are important applications from research in this area. Knowledge of our 24-hour cycles has stimulated research into the effectiveness of the chemical action of some medications and time of day. Research into chronotherapeutics would not be possible without the establishment of our circadian cycles and the changing chemicals associated with this. There are many points to consider when analysing the role of endogenous pacemakers in the control of circadian rhythms. Evidence supports the claim that the SCN located in the hypothalamus is the endogenous pacemaker controlling our circadian rhythms. This evidence takes a scientific approach and therefore can be argued to be high on internal validity. For example, isolation studies have measured the effects of the removal of external cues and studies have assessed the effects of lesioning the SCN, removing it or transplanting this structure. These studies provide strong objective evidence that the SCN is the location of the body clock. The use of animals in research, however, can be argued to lack external validity. The differing physical makeup and sleep patterns of small mammals, for example, may limit the generalizability to humans. It could be argued that the circadian firing pattern of the SCN has evolved to protect animals. For example, research has shown that lesions to the SCN that disrupt the sleep-wake cycles of chipmunks results in these animals being eaten by predators because they're not safely tucked away when they're most vulnerable. The adaptive nature of a determined circadian cycle might explain the persistence of the human 24-hour rhythm in the absence of external time cues. Although the adaptive nature of the cycle cannot be falsified, it remains compelling. As isolation studies have shown that circadian rhythms can become desynchronised in the absence of external time cues, this might imply there are various clocks controlling our rhythms, or perhaps that some of our circadian cycles are more or less reliant on external cues. Much research is focused on the location and function of biological clocks. However, it's equally important to understand the interaction of these clocks with the external time givers, as it's likely to have greater potential to offer solutions to people who experience disruption to their rhythms, such as shift workers. Research into the pacemakers has, however, stimulated research into clock genes. 
which may help understanding of the impact of disruptive rhythms and may also further our understanding of the individual differences in rhythms. The following points may be useful for analysing the role of exogenous psychobars in the control of circadian rhythms. Evidence from isolation studies supports the idea that we need the external time cues such as light to entrain our internal rhythms. It is therefore vital to understand the interaction of the internal clock and the external zeitgebers. Research suggests that light may be the dominant time giver for humans. Miles, for example, reported the case of a blind man who had a slightly longer than 24 hour rhythm and was therefore constantly out of sync with the external world. Despite alarm clocks and other attempts to entrain his rhythm, he remained a slave to his internal clock without light. Research into the role of light also suggests it may not have to enter the eyes to entrain our internal rhythms. This implies that the way the SCN and in turn the pineal gland receive information from the outside world about the light and dark cycles may be more complex than first thought. As evidence suggests that artificial light might also act as a time giver, this has applications for using external cues to entrain rhythms when they're disrupted and disorders associated with desynchronisation. Unfortunately, we have fairly limited knowledge of the role of zeitgebers in the control of circadian cycles other than light. Most research has focused on locating pacemakers and identifying the oscillating cells that might create the cycle. Research into zeitgebers focuses mainly on the role of light. This might be because light has an obvious effect, whereas for some time cues, such as social cues, it's not clear how they act as time givers, which makes it difficult to design a study to test the role. Social cues, for example, might act as time givers and entrain our rhythms psychologically. There might be an expectation we go to bed at a certain time or a sense of time created through having three spaced meals in the day. However, it's also been suggested that meal times might entrain rhythms biologically by resetting the oscillating cells in the organs. Further research into the range and action of zygobas other than light is necessary to fully understand the interaction of the environment and the internal clock. Just as individual differences are relevant to the pacemakers, they're also relevant to understanding the role of exogenous zygobas. Differences in sensitivity to external cues such as light could explain differences in chronotype and the different responses to the potential disruption of rhythms from shift work.